back again with another NFL DFS video, this time for our core plays here for week six of the NFL season. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over my data-based approaches, best plays at each position. There'll be a variety of different salary ranges from stud options to value plays at each position to help get you guys ready for the main slate this weekend. Just to give you guys an idea, not only are we going to have these core plays, tomorrow we're going to have my value plays and my fades and sleepers. And of course, Sunday, we're going to have our weekly DFS live stream. That's always at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure to keep an eye out for all of that content. But without any more delay, let's hop right into the core plays, starting off with our quarterbacks for week six. So starting off at number six with our quarterbacks, we have Taylor Heineke of the Washington football team. More of a value option on this slate at $5,800. I really like the matchup he has against the Kansas City Chiefs this weekend. As of right now, projected for 20.7 points. And again, we've seen Kansas City get absolutely carved up by a variety of different offenses. I mean, most notably last week with the Buffalo Bills, there were windy conditions. It was also very wet out, yet they still threw for well over 350 yards. So Taylor Heineke, definitely a good price there at $5,800. And I'll be targeting him against the soft defense. At number five for my quarterbacks, we have Lamar Jackson, $7,400, so a little bit more expensive than I'd like him to be, but in a very high-scoring game against the Los Angeles Chargers. So as of right now, projected for 22.9 points. And the only reason he's not higher on this list is because of the lack of options to stack with him. Obviously, they're a little bit more of a rushing first attack. Lamar gets a lot of his production on the ground. You also have Marquise Brown, who's priced up a little bit this week. Also, Mark Andrews, who's going to be mega chalk. And while Andrews is on my list at tight end, he's far from one of my favorite options at that position. So Lamar Jackson, do like him as a one-off, potentially stacking him with one of those options I mentioned at the receiver. At number four, we have Matthew Stafford at $6,700. Again, a very good price tag on them. I also like this matchup against the Giants, but I just expect the Rams to come out and absolutely demolish them. And obviously, a lot of that production could come through the air. You could see Stafford get out to three touchdowns, 300 yards in the first half, that kind of thing. But I also think that they're going to rely on that running game, right? They're going to get ahead. They're not going to risk a lot of their skilled players if they don't have to. And just to remind you guys, this Giants offense has absolutely no one left on offense. First of all, you have Daniel Jones. He's likely not to play with that scary concussion that he had. Saquon Barkley is doubtful as of right now. Ended up having a really nasty sprained ankle. You already had Darius Slay out, likely going to, sorry, Darius Slayne missed last week, also likely to miss this week. Same thing with a few other other receivers, including Sterling Shepard, who's highly questionable. So not really targeting that giant side of things. So that's why I'm a little bit skeptical about Matthew Stafford. I'd be a lot more bullish on him in a closer type of game flow, but he still makes my list at number four because it is a good matchup and he's at a very good price as well. At number three, we have Kirk Cousins at $6,200. While that matchup isn't as juicy, obviously this Carolina Panthers defense has been one of the best against the pass in the entire NFL to this point. Also has a lot of bodies coming on in terms of guys that they brought in, like Stephon Gilmore. They've also signed a few other key pieces on defense, so they're going to get even scarier. So as of right now, trying to buy in against them before a lot of these bodies get acclimated into the offense, perhaps as a few of them are starting their, for their first few games, right? They're not going to be used to this scheme on defense, could let up a few big plays. So Kirk Cousins, probably one of the last teams we can use to target against this Panthers team. So have them there at 21.6 points. And now for our two stud options up top. At number two, we have Patrick Mahomes, and this is another good spot to deploy him. Obviously, against the Bills, was a little bit less productive than a lot of people thought, but it's a much nicer matchup against the Washington football team. So even though he's $8,300, the most expensive QB on the slate, I'll definitely have more than my share of him. Have him projected right now for 25.1 points, and obviously some great stacking options to use around him as well. But at number one, we have Justin Herbert of the Los Angeles Chargers. And again, I love targeting this Ravens Chargers game. So at $7,300, Herbert has a good enough price tag to make him a priority. Have him projected right now for 23.8 points. And again, I expect this game to whole, look a whole lot like that Chargers Browns game from last week, a game where you see a ton of passing yards from each side, just a ton of scoring in general. So obviously like the Lamar Jackson side of things, but the reason why Herbert makes his way to number one on this list is the stacking options. I mean, you have Keenan Allen, who's going to be a prominent feature on this list when we get to the wide receiver spot. You have a good price at tight end with somebody like Cook. Hell, even Austin Eckler, though he is priced up this week, gets a ton of PPR production, and you can use him as a stack as well. So really do like Justin Herbert this week in that game in general.
Now getting into the running backs, at number six, we have Tony Pollard of the Dallas Cowboys, who as of right now is the running back two for this team. But Ezekiel Elliott is banged up, ended up landing on a pylon last week, and is dealing with a lower back injury, and one that is going to make him on a snap count, likely only to play about 40, maybe 50% of snaps this week, which means that Tony Pollard is going to get a bulk share of the targets and the carries this week. You know, Tony Pollard has already been somebody who's been a key feature of this offense, getting 12 plus touches in every game to this point of the season. But now that Ezekiel Elliott is banged up, we could see closer to 20, maybe even 25 touches if he's extremely effective. And again, Pollard has been the better back statistically to this point. A higher yards per carry, better yards in terms of yards out of the backfield, also better just in terms of per snap basis. So Tony Pollard, a little bit of a sleeper pick this week, somebody who could definitely earn even more of a share of the targets this week if he gets out to a good start. Again, this Patriots defense has been stout to this point, but against the run, they have shown a little bit of weakness. So have Pollard projected for 15.4 points and is an excellent value at that price tag. And number five, we have our spend up option for this list, the one stud that I'm really taking an eye on. And that is going to be Dalvin Cook at $7,700. Again, this Panthers defense is going to get a lot better as the season goes on. They have a few guys that they've signed that they need to get acclimated into the offense. A few guys returning from injury as well. So have them projected for 21.2 points. I also don't hate stacking them with somebody like a Kirk Cousins just because Dalvin Cook gets a ton of touches out of the backfield. So that's why it comes in there at number five. If the price was lower, if I wasn't so bullish on the passing end of that offense, if I thought Cook was going to get more carries, he'd probably find his way up to close, you know, one or two, that kind of thing. But still makes my top six there at number five. At number four, we have another value pick in Devontae Booker. He's $5,400 against the Rams defense. And again, this Rams defense is extremely stout, especially so against the pass. But against the run, they have a few holes that they open up typically. You know, typically teams don't run it very often against them just because the Rams are usually ahead. But when teams run against them, they average over four and a half yards per carry, which is actually one of the best rates in the NFL. So Booker at 16.9 projected points. A lot of that has to do with his opportunity. Again, going to start this week because Barkley is doubtful. Also, probably the only guy on offense that's going to be a returning starter other than Evan Ingram. I mean, the rest of the team is completely decimated by injury. It can be receiver. It can be the backup tight ends. The O-line's even hurt a lot. So Booker going to be relied on early and often for this offense. And while the matchup isn't great, he's going to get a ton of touches in this mid $5,000 price tier. That's somebody with an even better price, somebody I'm a little bit more confident in his workload this week, is going to be Darrell Williams at $4,900. He's playing for the Chiefs. He will be the starter this week for Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. So while that's not a team that runs the ball a ton, you don't see a ton of running back production from Chiefs backs. I have him projected right now for 16.5 points, which is more than enough points at $4,900. So again, Williams has been used as a PPR back out of this backfield for quite some time, getting a ton of checkdowns, a ton of setup passes and setup runs to him as well. So Williams already a part of this offense. Now that he'll be the featured back, I expect them to use him even more out of the backfield. So really good price tag right there. He's going to be chalk this week, but it is chalk that is well warranted. And number two, speaking of chalk, we have Kareem Hunt at $6,200. And while he is priced a lot higher than these other value plays, he's still one of the best point per dollar slates on the point per dollar plays on the entire slate. Playing against the Cardinals defense, obviously one of the higher scoring teams in the NFL, they tend to let up a lot of points as well. So even though they have a lot of quality defenders on this team, because they score so much, because they get into these shootouts, teams are able to score against them in terms of fantasy points. So Kareem Hunt going to be starting for Nick Chubb, who's already been rolled out. Kareem Hunt has already had a huge part of this offense. Somebody who catches a ton of balls out of the backfield. He's a much better blocker than somebody like Chubb, so gets a plenty of t snaps as a result. So the fact that he's going to be the lead back here is huge. If he ends up getting rolled out, which is a true possibility, I must admit, so he is questionable at this point, to Ernest Johnson would take his place here. Somebody who's the dead minimum price on DraftKings. Somebody who's been productive in starts in the past, averaging well over five yards a carry. But obviously, Kareem Hunt, a lot more upside than Johnson, just because we have that PPR end of things. Um, so that's why he makes it there number two. And at number one, we have Jonathan Taylor. He's $6,600, which is a steal for him against this Houston Texans defense. Ham rejected right now for 19.4 points. And that's why I'm not so focused on these guys up top. It's because we have Jonathan Taylor at $6,600. I have him projected very similarly to a lot of these elite tier options that at least $2,000 of difference. So this Houston Texans defense, again, we know they're an absolute dumpster fire out there. Not very competitive to this point in the year. So Jonathan Taylor in a very good spot to build on the momentum he showed last week 
on the primetime game. Quickly, before we hop into the wide receivers, wanted to talk about my Patreon page where you guys can find my projections for all the players on this week's slate. So if you don't just want my opinions on my top six players at every position, that's where you guys can get direct access to that data. On there, I cover every player for every week, whether it's for showdown, the main slate, you name it, I project every player for DFS purposes. On there, you won't just get my projected points, you'll get ownership rankings. You're also gonna get custom model rankings, whether they're in my player pool, and of course, access to the Discord to ask me any questions at any point and interact with the rest of the community. So the best part about it, it is just a dollar for the month. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. Link will be in the description so you guys can go ahead and join. Now for our wide receivers, this is a position that I'm looking to spend up a little bit more just because I like some of those mid-tier options at the running back position. So at number six, we have Adam Thielen at $5,800. This, again, a matchup that I'm trying to target before this Panthers defense gets scary. So as of right now, projected for 17.3 points in. Adam Thielen was questionable during the week. Same thing with Justin Jefferson, but both are expected to suit up. And having Jefferson active is actually a positive, in my opinion, for Thielen. Having Jefferson out there, garnering most of the attention of these defensive backs, Thielen is likely to get a lot of good looks this week. Um, the beneficiary, if Thielen were to be out, would be somebody like KJ Osborne. So make sure to keep that in mind. He still is questionable as of right now, but is expected to suit up. Um, KJ Osborne would take his place if he ends up being out. So again, really like the matchup, really like the price tag. That's why he's there at number six. At number five, we have Keenan Allen. So somebody who I foreshadowed a little bit before when we were talking about Justin Herbert. So he's $6,400, which is frankly a disrespectful price tag for somebody who puts out the production that he's capable of. Again, a good matchup against this Ravens team. They are a bottom 10 defense against the pass to this point of the 2021 season. So at 18 points projected exactly, a very good value option. Also somebody who gives you a true 25 to 30 point ceiling week in and week out. And number four, we have Brandon Cooks. This is another disrespectful price tag. It just doesn't make sense to me why he's priced at $5,800, especially from the production that we've seen to this point of this year. Last week was his only bad performance. Davis Mills absolutely went off, but it wasn't to Brandon Cooks. He got it to a lot of those tertiary options. The Patriots really tried to hunker down on Cooks, tried to take him out of the game, and were very effective at doing so. But as a result, completely opened up the rest of the offense. And I don't expect teams to try and take that strategy going forward, as the Patriots almost lost that game. Um, were heavily heavy favorites, obviously, going into it. So Brandon Cooks, a very good receiver here in 2021, despite being in a relatively inefficient offense. So projected for 17.5 points against a relatively good Colts defense. But again, Lamar Jackson, somebody that isn't known for his passing ability, threw for over 400 yards against them. So if Davis Mills goes out there, gets you 250 yards or something like that, a lot of that production is going to be funneled through Cooks and should have a very productive week. At number three, we have DJ Moore. So at $7,300, he was a fade of mine last week, but somebody I'm taking a look at to bounce back here in week six. So projected right now for 19.8 points, again, playing in that high scoring affair against this Vikings team. And in general, I think he's a very good buyback for my Kirk Cousins stacks. Again, we're going to be saving some salary by using our Kirk Cousins stack, um, as long as we're not taking both of those elite tier wide receivers. And using more with that extra salary that we have is a very good idea. Again, a lot of people are going to be scared to use him after having such of a dud week. Again, patting myself in the back, we faded him. We were able to take advantage of that. But now with the sentiment so negative on him, I'm completely ready to jump back on him, right? The only reason we faded him last week was matchup-wise. He was getting covered by one of the best wide receivers, um, by the best quarterbacks in the NFL, Darius Slay, um, which isn't going to be productive for anyone. So really like him here against this Vikings team that doesn't have any elite corners. At number two, we have Devontae Adams and even $9,000 in if you have the salary to spend up for Devontae Adams, by all means, please go ahead and do so. I mean, this is essentially a one-man offense out here for the Packers. The rest of the wide receivers are essentially non-factors. And to this point here in 2021, Adams has a 43.8% target share. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Again, is essentially this one-man army here for this team. So projected for 23.2 points. The huge opportunity cost right here is obviously the salary at $9,000. He really cripples you at a few of your other positions. But if you have a lineup where you have a couple value options that you really like, definitely worth spending up for. Somebody who at number one, I'm targeting a little bit more just because of the price difference here. Also because I'm stacking the quarterback a little bit more. Obviously, my number two quarterback being Patrick Mahomes. Tyree Kill is one of my favorite plays on the entire slate. 
So as of right, right now, projected for 22.8 points, which is 0.4 points less than Devontae Adams. But again, somebody I could stack up with Patrick Mahomes. And I really do like this matchup against the Washington football team. It's a little bit more of a better matchup than this Bears team. The Bears, a relatively good defense, also have a very good secondary. They have a few pro bowlers out there. I mean, Eddie Jackson, a few good corners as well. But for the Washington football team, pretty atrocious, right? We're not seeing very good production across the board. So at 22.8 projected points, I think he's well worth spending up for at $8,500. Now for our favorite tight ends, at number six, we have Jared Cook, who is also somebody like Keenan Allen that we can use in those Charger stacks. He's $3,200, also gives you quite a bit of salary flexibility. So with the soft matchup against this Ravens defense is going to be a no-brainer play. As of right now, projected for 14.2 points. So not somebody who has true 25-point upside or anything like that. would have to go out and score three touchdowns, which is very unlikely. But somebody with a relatively high floor that I'm definitely deploying out in cash contests along with my GPP contest as well. And number five, we have Mark Andrews, who is somebody I talked about before. He's going to be mega chalk this week. Um, I may have some Mark Andrews this week, but the only reason he makes this list, guys, is we don't have very many good options at tight end. I mean, not only do we have a lot of the elite options hurt in the NFL, a lot of the high-scoring games are the primetime games for this week. Mark Andrews is coming in, which is a crazy amount of ownership. So again, this is a very high-scoring game between the Chargers and the Ravens. So if I'm using a Chargers stack, if I need a buyback, um, I will be using Mark Andrews in a few lineups, but I don't love the ownership there. Have him projected for 16.1 points, which is all right, but you guys will see upwards in this range. You know, the guys at three through one are just much better plays in terms of point per dollar and in terms of their upside and their ownership. So Mark Andrews does make my, at least my top six tight ends for the slate, but not somebody I'm prioritizing. And number four, we have Evan Ingram, who is one of the only pieces other than Devontae Booker in this offense that we know is going to get significant playing time here. So at $3,400, even though the matchup against the Rams is not ideal, I definitely like his floor here. You know, somebody who's going to probably get seven plus targets just because they have no other bodies out there that are used to the offense. So at 16 point, sorry, 14.8 projected points, don't hate him on the slate. Again, it's a relatively cheap player that you can go to. Um, I like using Jared Cook in my Charger stacks, but if I'm using a one-off, I think Evan Ingram's a little bit of a better option there. At number three, we have TJ Hawkinson, who's $5,000 and has seen quite the fall in terms of price over these past few weeks. Hasn't quite been himself ever since having the injury, but all reports right now is that he looks like he's back to normal. Should be completely good to go here against the Bengals. So I'm projecting him back to what he has looked like for quite some time now, which is one of the best, if not the best tight ends in the NFL. Very good after the catch, very athletic. He's also going to play 100% of snaps. So projected for 16.3 points right now. And again, one of the better middle tier, middle tier options on this play, on the slate. And again, projected for a fraction of the ownership than somebody like Mark Andrews. So have him projected higher, have him projected for less ownership. That's why I see myself going that way a little bit more often. And number two, we have Travis Kelsey at $7,000. And this is actually one of the cheapest prices that we've seen Kelsey at for quite some time. So again, a very good matchup against this Washington football team. Have him projected for 18.7 points. And just last week, we saw Kelsey over $8,000 in terms of price. So to have him here in the $7,000 range, yes, he's the most expensive tight end on this slate, but it is a very reasonable tag for Kelsey than what we've seen before. But at number one, our best tight end on the slate, and I've said this week in and week out, if Darren Waller is on the slate at tight end, he's going to be our number one tight end. It does not matter the price. It can probably be $8,000 plus and it'd still be our tight end number one. So at $6,600, that is a steal of a price tag this week. The Broncos defense has been good against the pass to this point, but last week against the Steelers got a little bit exposed. So it could have been a little bit of fool's gold. They are playing some of the worst offenses in the NFL to begin the year. So I have Waller projected right now for 18.8 points, which is even more than Travis Kelsey, even at $400 cheaper. Again, this guy just gets targeted up the butt. Somebody who's probably going to get upwards of 10 targets in every game that's competitive at the very least. So Darren Waller, very good in PPR formats, especially for formats here like DraftKings, where you're getting a full point per reception. That is all I've got for my week six main slate picks. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments who you've got as your favorite team to stack on the slate. For me, obviously, I really like going after that Chargers team. I really think Justin Herbert has a good game against that Ravens team. But go ahead and let me know down in the comments who you've got, and we can get some debate going. As always, guys, I really appreciate you guys stopping by and supporting my videos. If you guys haven't already liked the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys go ahead and do so. Throughout the week, we're going to have even more NFL content coming out, like I mentioned before. We're going to have my values and fades and sleepers coming out tomorrow, as well as my weekly live stream on Sunday morning. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of that. 
Also make sure to set a reminder for 11.30 a.m. on Sunday so you guys remember to stop by for the stream. You guys can bring any questions you guys have. We're going to talk my player poll. We're going to go through every game as well. Get you guys completely prepared for that main slate. So until then, good luck with all of your lineups for this weekend, and peace.